All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Corey Ross. I'm producer of Immersive Van Gogh and founder, along with Svetlana Dvoretsky and Slava Zelesnyakov, of, of Lighthouse Immersive, which is the company that produces Immersive Van Gogh. We also have in attendance today our co producers, Maria Schlover and Irina Shabasis. Now, our goal this morning is to unveil the secret location of where Immersive Van Gogh is going to be in New York. We announced Immersive Van Gogh was coming to New York a couple months ago. We've had over 200,000 tickets sold, but everybody's asking, where is it? So that's what we're here today to do, but I'm not going to do it right away. Um, first of all, I wanted to speak a little bit about what is Immersive Van Gogh. So I'm standing in our gallery in Toronto. So you can see behind me on the walls, giant Van Gogh sunflowers. They're frozen, but it gives you a little bit of a concept of what the show is. So this is an immersive art installation. It started in, with, a, with a creator in Europe, a gentleman named Massimiliano Sicardi, who really is the Steven Spielberg of these immersive art installations. He's been creating them for 30 years in Europe, and he's created some extremely successful ones over the last decade in Paris. And our company is really excited to be bringing his work to North America. Uh, what Massimiliano does is it's kind of a combination of three concepts. One is art exhibiting, because you're going to see the art of Van Gogh. Second is filmmaking, because ultimately Massimiliano's art is an animated film. And then the third part is experiential. People in New York are familiar with Sleep No More, which is a great experiential show. It's a, it's a concept where the public walks through the space and the art happens in 360 degrees around them. It's projected on every surface in the building. Here in Toronto, we have 500,000 cubic feet of projection, but in New York, we're gonna make the biggest installation ever that we've ever made, that Massimiliano's ever been involved in. It's going to be three times the size of Toronto. We're gonna to be over 70,000 square feet of space. Now, our piece, uh, this art installation, it's, an, it's a completely new thing. Most people haven't been to something like this, but when we speak to Americans, many people know of it from Emily in Paris, the Netflix show, because Massimiliano's work was seen in episode five. So we have had the honor of having the lead actress from, from that TV show, Lily Collins, come through our exhibit in Chicago, uh, and we asked her to film a little introduction to what's going to be happening in New York. So we're going to roll that now, and you'll finally understand where we're coming in New York. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lily Collins. Immersive Van Gogh has already thrilled audiences in Toronto, Chicago, and San Francisco with critical acclaim and record-breaking audiences. But the best is yet to come. On June 10th, the largest and most imaginative version of the immersive art installation will open in New York City at Pier 36. Besides using an astonishing 500,000 cubic feet of projections, it will feature an amazing physical setting from award-winning designer David Korins, best known for his sets for the Broadway hits Hamilton and Dear Evan Hansen, as well as being the creative director for Lady Gaga, Bruno Mars, Kanye West, Mariah Carey, Andrea Bocelli, and Sia. Audiences that are used to seeing Corin's designs from their theater seats will now be able to become a part of them in this immersive experience. Corin's will create an entirely new showcase for the work of Massimiliano Sicardi, Luca Longobardi, and Vittorio Guidotti that will absolutely dazzle New York audiences. So there you have it, the secret's out. Our location is going to be Pier 36, over 70,000 square feet of exhibition space on the water in New York, where you can look out and see a true starry night when you come out at, at night after, after the show over the water. We believe it's going to be the perfect location uh, for, for this exhibition. Um, now, I just wanted to highlight who we have who will be speaking next. You're going to be hearing from David Corins. He's going to speak a little bit to what he's creating uh, in the exhibit. And you're also going to be hearing from Luca Longobardi, the composer of the music, which Massimiliano Sicardi has choreographed all of the animation to. And then later on, we're going to hear from Chris Haywood from New York and Company, who will speak to the tourism impact of, uh, of this uh, fabulous exhibit coming to New York. 
Um, so uh, without further um, ado, I'm going to pass it on. Uh, oh, sorry, before I do that, we have some B-roll to show you of the space uh, and the concept uh, on the water. So we'll roll that and then we'll go to David Corrins. Immersive Van Gogh features 40 of Van Gogh's masterpieces, including Sunflowers and The Starry Night, all animated and brought to life. People say it's like being inside a Van Gogh painting. Created by artistic director Massimiliano Sicardi and composer Luca Langombardi, 74 state-of-the-art projectors show Van Gogh's work onto every surface, and the experience is accompanied by a beautiful musical score featuring both classical and contemporary music. Immersive Van Gogh was absolutely amazing. Immersive was almost an understatement. You were really just like absorbed into everything. It was the most amazing thing next to seeing one of his original paintings. It was very eye-catching, very engaging. I loved how it almost felt like it was telling a story. Safety is our number one priority. From the moment we got here and entered the front doors, our tickets were paperless. So they scanned our tickets, they took our temperature. Patrons can wander throughout the galleries during the presentation, but we encourage you to stop in one of the designated social distancing circles. We almost had our own little pods six feet apart from the next person. The New York venue for Immersive and Go will be Pier 36, a state-of-the-art event space along the banks of the East River with beautiful views of the Manhattan and Williamsburg bridges and the city's skyline. The pier has hosted numerous art expositions, fashion shows by Alexander Wang, Hugo Boss, Tommy Hilfiger and Mark Jacobs, the New York City Food and Wine Festival and much more. Lighthouse Immersive is proud to be a part of the safe reopening of New York City's cultural scene by bringing live events back to our community. Okay, and uh, next up we'll hear from David Corrins, uh, the extraordinary set designer who is going to be bringing our site to life at Pier 36. Hi, thank you. Um, first of all, I just want to thank you all for being here and for your interest in the project. Um, I'm only going to talk for a couple of minutes. I look forward to the question and answer section. And I want to thank uh, Corey and the rest of the producing team for having me on board. Um, it's a crazy thought to think about Van Gogh. I remember the first time I ever saw a Van Gogh painting in real life. And I remember staring at those brush strokes and the built up paint and the colors and thinking like you can sort of feel the artist willing these paintings into existence. And now, you know, 30 plus years later, um, this group of extraordinary artists have kind of banded together to take you literally deep within the crevices and the nuances of those very, very same paintings that I was so struck by. Um, it's kind of an amazing full circle moment. And I've been fortunate enough to work on um, so many incredible projects with extraordinary artists, but it's so rare to be asked to kind of join in um, to a bona fide hit after it's been created. And I give the producers and the creative team a lot of credit for not resting on their laurels, for um, understanding this incredible property they have created, and then um, seeking out new talent to kind of refract the experience through my own artistic sensibilities and kind of plus up, um, you know, this incredible thing that they've made. So as Corey said, Immersive Van Gogh takes you into like deep within um, on a very personal and profound journey and a look at Van Gogh's work, um, but also Massimiliano's work, his interpretation of it. And the amazing thing as someone who kind of like trades in the currency of visual images, the way that you get to experience the storytelling here is um, not only like a rare way to experience Van Gogh's work, but an incredibly profound and rare way to experience art in general, where you literally can step inside of these paintings and see those nuanced brushstrokes kind of happen and form in front of your eyes. And it's my job um, to take this thing and sort of pour gasoline on the entire experience that's already been created and fan the flames of creativity to make the New York production um, deeper and richer, more dynamic, more specific, more entertaining. Um, I think we have a, 
a, a, an image of the lobby that I want to share with you. Um, it's the first of many that we'll be releasing and a lot of other details that will be coming up. But this is, um, you know, a little taste of just the lobby experience. This isn't even the piece that Massimiliano created. Um, this rendering shows you kind of my own artist uh, version of 7,500 plus paintbrushes dipped in, in multiple colors of blue and, and yellows and oranges to create my own abstract version of Starry Night hanging over your head. There's, of course, iconic, um, you know, there's iconography that creates an architecture and sunflower walls and oversized paintings so that you can really take, again, a deeper look um, at what, uh, you know, perhaps was going on in the mind and heart and spirit of Van Gogh. Um, I've been furiously uh, working away at not only the exterior of the building, the lobby experience, but also what happens inside of these video galleries. Um, it's not just kind of standing there looking at these paintings. There's a ton of new um, dynamic viewing levels, ways in which the projections and the incredible film that Massimiliano created um, is going to be refracted through um, all of these different kind of mirrored sculptures that we're making. Um, and then once you kind of come out of the, the video galleries of which there are multiple video galleries, once you come out of them, you're thrust into the lobby into a whole bunch of new, totally unique, um, brand new experiential activations that are not just kind of plussed up decor, but they are um, interesting, um, hopefully introspective, impactful ways to kind of experience Van Gogh, the man, the artist, and the brand. Um, I am hopeful that it will uh, leave viewers and patrons with a deeper appreciation of his art. Uh, that'll be informative and really, really fun. Um, I think also, as Corey mentioned, the thing about this space is it's 70 plus thousand square feet. Um, and they chose that venue for two real reasons. One is so that we could safely um, interact with the experience in this post-COVID world, having, you know, made a lot of my career doing live events and having Broadway shut down. Everyone's been kind of shivering with anticipation about art, the art world um, and the in, in live, live world coming back to life in New York. And to think about a 70,000 square foot experience coming back to New York is just like gives me shivers up and down my spine. It's the most incredible feeling. And so it's safe. It's huge. It's safe. But they also chose it so that you could really step back and understand the scale, the profundity and the, you know, the vision of what Massimiliano and the team have created. And finally, it's, as Corey mentioned, right on the waterways of New York with these beautiful views of the, the bridges and everything. And I just think there's an added um, poetic nature to the fact that you, um, you know, see this incredible work uh, and body of work of this artist that oftentimes is inspired by nature or, and or of nature. And then you get to step out right onto the water and um, you know, let that kind of poetic full circle moment happen right there in, in New York. So um, I look forward to your questions. Before we do that, I'd love to um, introduce our composer, Luca Lombagardi. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, David. I'm so glad you have joined the creative team and we are excited to see your vision come to life. Uh, my name is Luca Longobardi, and I am the composer of the musical score for the exhibition. It is my great pleasure to proudly accompany Immersing Van Gogh in such a journey to North America. And today I am particularly excited because my music returns uh, to the place I've often called my city, the city where I studied music and lived for two wonderful years. Well, that was 20 years ago, but still, you know. I'm very happy that this is happening precisely with the Immersive Van Gogh Show, an immersive work representing a very deep link between music and images, narrative and emotions, the artist Van Gogh and the man Vincent. In fact, the work focuses on the person behind the artist, the man who lived this art and with that modified the perception of reality, conditioning the future of humanity itself. In Immersive Van Gogh, his paintings have been transformed in a contemporary high-tech form that still allows the essence to remain the same. They have 
just become alive in a contest where we can immerse ourselves. The soundtrack was conceived and built as a single unique score to accompany the images without overloading the feelings they suggest. In a way, it can evoke old memories and create new ones. This is why, together with my original composition, uh, you can listen to the composition of classic repertoire or new arrangement of pop songs. It is a way to engage the memory of a vast audience and lead everyone back to a common path. Especially in times like this, so difficult and full, I hope that immersive Van Gogh so proves liberating and healing and that music together with images can reach your free mind and your open heart. Thank you. And now you will be hearing from New York and Company's Chris Haywood. Thank you again. Good day, everyone. And thank you so much, Luca, for that nice introduction. And thank you to uh, Immersive Van Gogh and the entire Lighthouse Art Space family for this great investment. I just think it's extraordinary and it really uh, is going to capture the imagination of so many people and really it reminds us that we live in the creative capital of the world. And this is, this is going to be a real catalyst, a real demand generator for New York. Uh, on behalf of the city of New York, Mayor de Blasio and NYC and Company, the city's official destination marketing group, we'd like to welcome this uh, immersive Van Gogh to New York City. Uh, this is a very exciting time for our destination. And just this week, we joined Mayor de Blasio to announce an ambitious, marketing and advertising campaign, the likes we've never seen, an unprecedented $30 million effort that will launch in June, just as this immersive Van Gogh effort is getting underway, to lure domestic and international visitors back to New York City. But while the advertising and marketing will be so important, it's events like these and exhibitions like these and investments like these that are really going to be the catalyst to draw people to New York City and bring the visitors back uh, in 2019, we had a record 66.6 .6 million visitors. It was 10 consecutive years of tourism growth. Last year, tourism fell off a cliff. This year, we're expecting 36.4 million visitors. So we'll hopefully capture more than half of the visitors we had in 2019. And it's events like these and exhibitions like these that are really going to bring back the visitors. And so I just want to thank you all. I think, David, the work that you're doing here to make this the most elaborate uh, exhibition that we've had is extraordinary. The investment uh, and the fact that it's going to be so large, 70,000 square feet on the Lower East Side of New York City. And like you said, connecting to the waterfront of New York, which is just such a gem of our city, I think is extraordinary. So these are the kinds of things that create urgency for people to wanna to come now, book now. And we're coming out of this dark tunnel and um, there is light. And I like to say we are, um, our tourism recovery is gradual but certain. And uh, events like this remind us that New York City is open for business. So uh, I think your timing is great and congratulations on uh, the investment. And we look forward to doing all we can to amplify this great event. And now I'll turn it back to Corey. Thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, David. And thank you, Luca, uh, for this presentation. We're coming to the end of our prepared remarks, um, but our publicist, Carol, uh, is in the chat and moderating questions. So we're happy to take any questions uh, that you may have at this time. Just put them into the chat and we'll begin answering. Good morning, everyone. Um, we have a few questions that have come in already. Um, to start with, Corey, why Van Gogh and why now? All right, why Van Gogh and why now? So Van Gogh, first of all, was uh, was Massimiliano's choice. We said, we'd love to work with you and bring your art to America. And uh, who would you like to start with? He had created a, a Van Gogh Starry Night exhibition in Paris, but what he wanted to do was something new, something a little bit more edgy or something a little bit more psychological into Van Gogh, but he felt that he had sort of further to go um, with Van Gogh. Now this was all Pre, and, and we said, we'd love to support you. And we'd love, that sounds exciting. And we'd love to make it happen. So that's how the conversation about Van Gogh um, began. Um, but in terms of why now, we started this pre-pandemic, we went down this road. Um, but what I've noticed as we've opened in Toronto, Chicago and San Francisco already, uh, in, and, the, and the public has come out and we've begun to see how they, how they interact with the, with the art installation, 
uh, is that there probably is no, would have been no better time to be working with Van Gogh's art and to be thinking about Van Gogh uh, than today. He really does speak to the situation today in a very unique way. We've got a, a, a life story in Van Gogh, a gentleman who's struggled with depression, mental illness, uh, isolation, uh, and these are all things that people can relate to now after coming through a year of isolation in the pandemic, that the, the, they can relate to it now more uh, than ever. Um, and yet here we are 130 years after Van Gogh passed away and the art transcends. We know it, we still find it exciting uh, 130 years later. And that transcendence, I think the public is finding very cathartic. So um, we didn't choose Van Gogh because of the pandemic, but I think within the context of delivering art during the pandemic, uh, we were just very fortunate. We couldn't have chosen a more apropos artist. Another question that came in is, is the exhibit good for kids and families? Yeah, absolutely. We have people of all ages come through. Um, roughly 60% of our audience, uh, when we poll them, says they come on a date night. But then most of the remainder come on family, on family, uh, on family trips. And young kids come in. They have a great time in the exhibit. They run around, uh, socially distanced, but run around uh, with the, with the um, projections. Uh, and it's a great way to introduce young people to Van Gogh's art. There are a number of questions um, about particulars, such as preview dates and how long will the exhibit run? Uh, okay, we're going to open on June 10th. We're still working on the final schedule of previews, but there may be an update on that soon. We're just working on all the technical aspects of installing the show um, into the venue, which will inform that. Um, so uh, folks in the press who are watching this, Carol will, will keep you up to date. Um, uh, in terms of how long it'll run, we're currently running until the end of August. So it's a summer thing. Uh, come down to the pier and you'll have a great time. Uh, Corey, can you talk a little bit about the digital projectors? Um, what, what, uh, what type are they and how many are you using? Uh, good questions for, uh, for New York. I think we're over 150 projectors. Um, they're coming from Panasonic. We're the largest purchaser of Panasonic projectors um, uh, in the world. Um, they're mostly relatively small projectors. So if there's, if there's uh, people who are really familiar with projection uh, on this, one of the reasons the projectors are rel relatively small, they're about seven or 8,000 lumens um, each, which is you know, in a movie theater, you might see a 30 or 40,000 lumen projector. Um, but our projectors have to be positioned relatively close to the walls and to the architecture so that we don't cast shadows. Um, so part of that is the reason that we have so many. Part of that is the reason that we choose the, the lumens um, are, are a little bit more limited. But there's other interesting stats that I can give you. We have over 90 million pixels, uh, over 500,000 cubic feet of projection. Um, the fiber optic cabling that we have to run to run all this through Pier 70, if you stretched it out from, uh, from the Statue of Liberty, you could go all the way to the top of Manhattan and back again. Um, it's miles and miles of fiber optic cable. Um, uh, into this exhibit. Um, all of this, by the way, is, is provided for us by um, PRG, which is one of Broadway's top uh, suppliers of, te of, of technology. Uh, and, uh, uh, and we're glad that we're able to work with them and keep that whole team working through this pandemic. Uh, David, can you talk a little bit about how working on this exhibit is different from building a Broadway set? Oh, wow. Um well, you know, usually uh, a Broadway set is kind of tethered to uh, a linear narrative. Um, this is tethered to an artistic expression um, and through, you know, and, and to a body of work um, of someone who lived a long time ago. So, uh, you know, for me, it's more like um, where music is kind of a through line straight to your heart. This is like meeting with both Luca and Massimiliano and trying to kind of like, um, understand and distill and crystallize their ultimate vision and then find a way to kind of refract that from my own artistic sensibilities. It's a much more kind of muscular um, artistic expression. Uh, you know, Broadway shows tell a very, very specific narrative, um, but it's, a, it's an equally um, daunting and specific challenge. It's just like on a massive scale, we could probably fit, uh, you know, 10 Hamiltons inside of this. Terrific. Um, Luca, can you talk a little bit about the muse, more about the music and how you were inspired by the paintings? Oh, of course. Uh, the thing, 
probably the, the, the main thing about our shows is that music doesn't come in, in a second. It's not like it, music actually is born together with the images of the storyboard. When we write a show, we already uh, know which kind of music I would love to, to, to compose or Massimiliano wants, wants me to compose or which one we are going to choose to to cover other moments. And uh, of course, then there's a, it's a very complex thing because it's not only what the painting, what paintings say to us or to me, it's also uh, how to tell people what they think about those paintings. It's a very complicated and um, way to exchange, you know, thoughts about, about Van Gogh's uh, art. And um, that's why it takes kind of long, you know, to, to put together a show like that, because we start to work, but it's at, at least uh, something that goes for uh, three, four months, just thinking about it. And then uh, we start to create the, the, the real thing. I, I mean, the music, the animation, and then we go back and forth. And then we have to put the show, the show in, in different location. It means every time you see the show, in, in a location in, that, that is going to be unique. It means what you see in New York is not what you see in Chicago or in San Francisco in Toronto, because the place has to talk to people as the paintings do. And uh, so my invitation is to go to go to see how many you can in the States. You know, you have the chance to go around. When, we have, when we're going to have the chance to go around, just travel and see how many Van Gogh you can. <laughs> Um, a question came in about the number of um, Van Gogh paintings that are used, and do you see the whole painting or just parts of the paintings? Okay, I think there are more than forty, and you see, you see both. The thing, the thing is like um, what we do actually. It's point. It's focusing on little things that uh, hit our our um, attention, and that is a way to um, to bring to people our interpretation of the painting. It's just our idea. It's like to talk freely about someone and art with other art. And you're gonna see the whole thing and you're gonna see a little but very precise particular of every painting. So it's gonna be a totally different um, way to experiment art. And there is like another thing in respect in comparison with a, uh, with a museum, you have to do both. This is our idea. It's like, see what we think, see what's the real thing, and then like come up with your idea of, of, of the whole thing. Okay, thank Carol, you. If, I, if I might comment. So we've licensed over 400 images from museums around the world, and that's the raw material that Massimiliano and Luca work with to create this. But the, 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 it, 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 until you see it, it's hard to describe, but maybe the best description is to think about a DJ who samples from one song and another song and, and a beat and brings it all together and it becomes a new musical piece. So what Massimiliano does is he deconstructs these pieces after we license them from the museum. He deconstructs the paintings that are his raw material. He animates them. He reconstructs them. One blurs into the other, morphs into another, and it follows sort of a stream of consciousness. Massimiliano told us that he kind of started this with the concept of what might have flashed before Van Gogh's eyes and the moments before he passed away. And so from that, we kind of delve into this stream of consciousness, this visual stream of consciousness that, that takes you behind the scenes into the psychology of Van Gogh. Uh, and so it's very different than an art exhibit. It's not an omnibus or just throwing up on the wall uh, the, 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 the pieces of Van Gogh in, in a digital way. It's something completely new. It really is Massimiliano, Luca, and David working together to refract their artistic vision of, of these images and a reinterpretation and a new way of looking at and encountering Van Gogh's art. Here's a question for David and Luca. David, we'll start with you. It's actually a three-part question. What was the biggest joy creating this? And what was the biggest challenge? And finally, what do you hope visitors come away with after seeing the exhibit? A joy, challenge, and come away with. Yeah. Uh, you know, for me, the joy is uh, multi-part. You know, as I said earlier, getting to get back to make a live event for the city that I live and work in um, is just an incredible idea um, and feeling. Uh, getting to immerse myself, immerse myself literally in these works of art um, and diving pretty deep into the, the man, the artist, um, has been a real joy uh, to be able to stare at these pieces um, and to think about what a 2021 audience 
might want to see in these things or experience them or how they might want to experience them. That's been a real joy to kind of dig into a grandmaster's work. Um, the biggest challenge has been we're, you know, we're shrugging off and we're really not even shrugging it off this pandemic. We're, we're like, we're, we're working through a pandemic and the biggest challenge has been supply chains, permitting, you know, kind of willing this thing into existence, finding a venue that we can deliver safely um, and impactfully. Uh, and, I, and I just think this is probably the biggest experience that has been put up, it, certainly in the city, since the pandemic took, um, you know, white knuckled grip of us. And, and so it feels like a revelatory return, um, but, it, but things have changed around the world with regard to material access. So kind of like towing the line between, you know, grand visions and what we can pull off has been really fascinating and interesting. And what I hope people take away, um, I, I'm interested in people going on an intellectual and emotional and visceral and spiritual journey with this artist um, who, you know, had no idea because he, you know, died a poor man. He had no idea of his impact, even, you know, that would happen close to his life. But here we are so many years later and his impact is, you know, indelible and massive. Um, and I just think, people are going to have fun. I think my hope is that they have, you know, that they are changed a little bit, that they have fun. Um, it becomes a conversation piece. Like if you didn't do it, you kind of like were left out of the summer conversation. And I think that they will do that because it's so overwhelming and so impactful what I think we're going to pull off. Great. Um, Luca, the biggest joy creating it, the biggest challenge, and what do you hope people will come away with? Okay, so for the, um, the the biggest joy creating this, I think I think it's the collaboration because like working with Massimiliano, David, and Vittorio and uh, Corey and Svetlana, it really made me feel alive, especially during this last year when everything was so difficult, you know, especially for the for the for artists. So that was really something that, that kept me alive and felt and made, made me feel really that something was going on. You know, collaboration is always uh, moving. It's always uh, something that, that I really appreciate. And then like the biggest challenge was, according to me, was two kind of uh, two different things. First of all, was to respect Van Gogh's uh, art, because when you talk about another, another artist, you have to really understand it and uh, you have to be uh, humble, you have to to tell you your what you think in a way that you never overload. You know uh, the, the 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 main um, the main thing. And the second challenge was, the, of course, the, the pandemic situation because, like, we used to find f finalize the show, going to the location, and like to hear the listen to the music, see the images, see how it works, and we could not uh, as we did in Europe. So that was really, really hard, you know, to manage everything just sitting from this desk in Rome. And uh, what I, I hope that visitors will come, um, we get from that, as I was saying before, I hope the experience will be healing and liberating. I think we need uh, beauty and art, you know, to, um, to feel again, like free to, embrace each other because we 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 kind of force um, ourselves right now to be distant you know and, and i think art can really heal this kind of feeling we are experiencing right now so this these are the um, my main thoughts uh, christopher how do you think this new um injection of immersive art will be received by new york audiences i just think it's going to be a uh, hugely attractive draw van gogh is is uh so iconic. And I think this is just such a creative execution of it. Um, people are looking for unique experiences and only in New York can you have the bragging rights that you did something very special and unique. So I think this is gonna be a huge catalyst. You know, We live in an Instagram era right now. So people want to be able to uh, see, record. And I think this is all the sensory uh, overload um, in a good way that comes with an exhibition like this, I think is a feast for the senses. And I think that people are just going to be very excited. And frankly, this is the kind of thing that might just get people to book a trip or drive into the city on a weekend. And as you said, take a date, come with the family. Um, I just think there's a, a broad appeal of something like this and it's gonna be hugely, um, hugely helpful in terms of us uh, motivating people 
Um, and it comes just as we're coming out of the pandemic. Most people will have been vaccinated. And I think we're giving people a license to return to New York City to enjoy themselves, to create new experiences. And these are the kinds of experiences that we want to be able to promote. So I think it's going to be hugely beneficial. Terrific. Corey, there are a number of questions as we come out of the pandemic. How many jobs will be created in New York and in the United States in general for the um, immersive Van Gogh ex exhibits around the country? Uh, we employ over 300 people in every city that we come to. Um, so there'll be a lot of local jobs. We have local artists that come in and we have, we, we have an artist in residence program where there's artists creating on site. Uh, we have uh, we have David and his whole team and uh, um, you know creating the exhibit. Uh, we have uh, the members of Local One uh, Technical Union putting in the in installing uh, the exhibit, and then of course we have all of the arts workers and staff who will be running it on a day-to-day -day basis um, uh, in New York. And you know, if you check our website, we're on sale in 18 cities across the U.S., so we're going to have that economic impact virtually everywhere uh, we go. Um, Corey, another question is, how does immersive Van Gogh differ from other Van Gogh um, exhibits? Well, so Van Gogh's art is public domain. So uh, if you wanted to, anyone on this call, although I don't think we need more, <laughs> more Van Gogh exhibits, but if you wanted <laughs> to make your own, uh, I, I suppose you could. Um, what I think is unique about our, our, uh, our really it's an art installation, um, is the artist. So that's the reason why it was important to me to bring Luca to bring David, to bring Massimiliano, to bring them together, because none of the other folks are talking about their artists. But this, what we have is truly t today's contemporary and world's most talented artists refracting and interacting with Van Gogh. Uh, and so this takes everything to a whole new level. Uh, I guess I could additionally add that we're the biggest one, over 70,000 square foot. We're the biggest one. We have the most experience we've been running since we opened in July last year in Toronto with COVID safety. Um, and, uh, and we've conceived this whole thing around COVID safety. There's nothing that you need to touch in the exhibit that other people have touched. Uh, some of the others have VR goggles. Uh, you can come through ours with your hands in your pockets uh, and, uh, and we will run a, sa a COVID safe environment. Terrific. Um, the question about the artist in residence program, um, how does one become an artist in residence? Oh, that's a good question. We will be putting out a press release with options for people to submit their, uh, their, uh, um, their portfolio, and then we'll do a selection uh, and choose uh, the right artists. Um, but we certainly need mural artists. Um, we, need, we need artists who create craft. Um, and we have a couple curated artists that we will also be bringing in who, we, who we've selected already, but we will be announcing later. We can't announce everything today. We gave you the location. We gave you David. We gave you Luca. We, you don't get it all today. <laughs> okay, great. And for the last question of the morning, um, let's see, where did it go? Hold on one second. Um, for the creators, um, has your own view of Van Gogh and his work changed on this journey? of creating the exhibit. David, we can start with you. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I feel like whenever you uh, work on a subject, you know, a subject or with a subject, you learn more and, and you you change your opinions or you learn, you, you, just, you just experience more. I always thought probably like most people, um, uh, Van Gogh, you know, Starry Night, Textured Painting, The Ear, right? All these things. For me, I dug pretty deep into this idea of synesthesia, chromesthesia, um, what, his, uh, what his world was like, what his relationship with his brother was like, um, his sister-in-law. And, you know, I realized that a lot of his condition was something that actually propelled him and accelerated his art, um, you know, to be, to be able to have been gifted with um, a condition that allows you to hear sound as colors or, you know, it, or it is like an extraordinary thing. And then to be able to take that knowledge for me as an artist working in 2021 and understand how Luca and Massimiliano have literally taken colors and, and written a score to colors. Um, it's just a beautiful, I mean, talk about full circle. It's a beautiful full circle moment um, I think that like, I have learned so much about the man 
so much about his life and have gained such a deeper appreciation. And I feel, you know, humble to be in the presence of these of these works. Luca? For me, la, not really changed, but enriched. I mean, like we've been sort of researching a lot before uh, putting the show together. So we um, we did a lot of like reading and, and, and thinking and, and like in writing and rewriting. But what really uh, excites me every time is to read what people think about, uh, you know, the show and uh, at the same time uh, uh, about Van Gogh's um, paintings. And every time I see the show, I found out something different, you know, and another little particular that I didn't, I didn't see before. So the experience brings me to, to have this, like my, my main idea enriched every time I see the show I, or, or like I read what people think about it or see the reaction of people watching the show. So it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's overwhelming every time. Terrific. I know there are a lot more questions. There will be a slide at the end of the presentation of how to reach out to us. We will, of course, be reaching out to everyone who participated today. And Corey, I thought I'd throw it back to you to see if there's any um, final comments you want to make today. I just wanted to thank everyone for attending. We are available for interviews. We're going to have more press events, including in person when, we, when we're in the, in the previews. Um, uh, Carol and her team will distribute press release, B-roll, um, our website is immersivevango.com. Um, uh, we found when we've done some interviews in some of the other cities that the editor, or I don't know who, picks up the wrong exhibit graphics or the wrong website link. So please, please, please take the information from, from Carol and her team that they will be distributing. But otherwise, we're just delighted to be able to bring this project to New York. It's so exciting to be working with this incredible creative team. We've got a great group of producers and arts workers who are really dedicated to making this a success. And we're really honored that you all came out. So many of you came out uh, for this press conference today. Uh, so thank you very much. And we'll see you in June in New York. Thank you. Ciao.